Tesla is not a real car. It's more like a computer on wheels. That comes more obvious than ever when Tesla is sending out its over-the-air software updates to the car. These updates I see as a huge advantage for the Tesla brand. The car just gets better and better with more functions and features added to the car. But that means also that the interface on the screen in the car can be updated. And since some time now, there has been a new major design change. It's like a mobile phone or a software in a computer that suddenly changes the design. And I don't know about you, but I feel almost like an idiot not knowing what to do when faced with a completely new design. Everything that I learned, my experience how things work, can suddenly not be used to accomplish the things that I want to do. This is the reason why many humans have such a difficulty to adapt to new things and resist to leave old habits behind. But in today's world, when our best companion is our mobile phone and maybe also the computer, to get things done, we have to form a strategy in life that contains of continuous learning because we cannot relax and depend on status quo. But on the other hand, the software developers that is driving the evolution of the design and the software that we are using must also take in the aspect that people don't like changes. Is Tesla doing it the right way? Is the new interface better than the old one? In some ways, yes, maybe, but on the other hand, maybe not so much. Or is it we users that in the beginning don't understand how brilliant the design is until we get used to it? Let's have a look at it. I will not make a full review of the new design, but uh, I will show you some key differences. Here in my Tesla now with this new software, there is this car symbol down here, but then there is some other symbols here and doesn't look really like it was before. But anyway, if I press this one, then I get this view here with a lot of different things uh, that could be valuable to uh, access. For example, if I want to open the glove box, it's over here now. And then you have the winch wiper shields here and adjustments of mirrors and steering here. And if you want to uh, save a recording when you are driving, how do you do then? Well, then you press this record button and it saves the last of the 10 minutes of recording from the car and saves it on your USB stick. And then there is uh, those different uh, symbols here and uh, things that you can uh, access. One thing is this one that has been new, the trip page, where you measure the distance that you have been driving. Before it was located here and you had to push and go forward like this to find those uh, uh, measurements uh, indicators. Now they are here uh, and um, here you have the current trip since last charge and then you have those trips, the two meet measurements that you can use for your own preferences. Uh, but how do you delete? How do you make them zero? Can I do this like this? Press A. No, here is not. Here is just changing the name. Okay, well, then you have to pull this one up here. And here you have buttons that you can reset the trip meter. The, another thing is the heat the heating system. And if you would like to uh, put 
on the heating uh, to the car then where to do that the in the heating in the car yeah and also in the seat for example now when it's winter and cold like this uh, it's necessary to put on the heat and also turn it off because when the car gets warm I don't like to have it warm all the time well then you press like this here and then you start the heating and then you also get uh, buttons here to heat the seating seat heat is here you have also this new auto function uh, but I don't know how it works well it turns on the heating in the seat when it's cold but um, I, I rather like to heat it up in the beginning so it's not cold when I come to the car but then I prefer to take it off when my butt is warming the seat by itself anyway uh, this is the place where you adjust this one and the rear seats are here now in this interface you cannot turn on and off the front seats like it was in the previous software version Like this and then you have a all off button here which makes it very easy quickly turn everything off I wonder if the front heats are also turned off if I turn on this one and like this and make all off is the front heat turned off yes the front heat turned off also Anyway, so <clears throat> what you also can do here, if you want to adjust the temperature, you can hold this and then you can pull this, yeah, like this you can do and change the temperature like this. This is kind of cool. So I want to have 20 degrees Celsius in the car. Here you have also the split button if you want to adjust the temperature for different zones in the car. But what about these buttons here? What is this going on? Here is the phone button. Okay, I make a phone call here. I can uh, look at the camera like this. That could be necessary. And here I also have my entertainment tab, which is really cool. But where is all the other things? Well, you press this one here and then you get a lot of things that you can have that you want to access. So if I would like to ask, access the dash cam, I can put it here now and now I have the dash cam function there. And what you can do is that you can move this one also and put it here, which means that uh, the car can adjust to your own preferences what buttons you want to have here in this menu for quick access and also you can remove something if you would like to do by pressing this X and then if you are finished you just press somewhere else and the system has returned to normal what do you think did Tesla do the change carefully enough Comment your thoughts uh, down below this video. I'm really curious to know what you think. Another new function is that now uh, that has been added to the Tesla app is now that you can get statistics on how much you have charged your car. In the menu charging status, you can see the statistics of how much the car has been charged. This is a function that is interesting to have and you can see how much you have charged your car at home or supercharged the car or charged in another place. This red line uh, is representative for how much you have supercharged, for example. There is also some kind of calculator how much you have saved I don't know how accurate this is and you can fill out your numbers yourself to make the uh, calculation more accurate. 
Another EV-related breaking news story is that the Swedish company Northvolt, that already has a gigafactory building batteries in the Swedish city of Skellefteå, will build another factory, this time in Gothenburg, Sweden. This is a joint venture with Volvo Cars. The new battery manufacturing plant will open its operation in 2025 and create up to 3,000 jobs. The battery produced will be used to help Volvo Cars' electrification strategy as the company aims to produce and sell only pure electric cars by 2030. Talking about supercharging, now Tesla have opened up some of its supercharging locations for other car brands than Tesla in France and Norway, before it was already open in the Netherlands. It's not long time now until they will open up supercharging locations all over Europe for other car brands to charge. That's my guess. But... The demand for electric cars is now bigger than ever and you can see that on the chargers that is getting more and more crowded. Look at this supercharger in Stockholm that I visited the other day. All the stalls are busy except one of them. Other EV brands are also occupying other charging networks and the lines are forming. It has gone so far that in the Swedish media now people take this as another excuse not to go electric and buy diesel cars. They are so afraid of the queues at the fast chargers. Talking about fear of change.